really, really proud of my team. I know I've said that a lot, but, uh, you know, their approach, um, how they just came in and wanted to get better every single day and really blocked out all the noise. And, um, you know, they showed up. And I told you guys that. They kept, they kept showing up. Uh, practice, film sessions, shoot-arounds, extra work, film. Um, it's a special group. You know, I don't think our record, and I said this too, is a reflection of how hard this team has worked, how they've competed and, and really put themselves out there. And we're going to continue to do that um, because it's going to be short-lived. I mean, give Michigan credit. Great team, top 10 team, fought back like we knew they would, and we were able to kind of punch back, which was great to see. That Miles Dread 3 was huge. So we'll get, we'll get up tomorrow. We'll get back to work. And we'll, we'll be happy tonight, but we got Purdue on the horizon. Pat, the, your defense today, n number one, the effort on defense, and number two, the, the one, two, two, three quarter. We've seen that, but not for an entire game. Was there a reason you decided to unleash that for an entire game tonight? I, I just felt like we've been playing it really well, and I, and I think it suits Josh Reeves, and it really plays into what he's good at. And if we want the most out of Josh Reeves, I think we're going to have to play it. And usually, I, like you said, I pick and choose my, my times when I, when I want to play it. Um, and Michigan runs so many good sets, good cuts for so many good shooters. I just didn't want them to have 24, 25, 26 seconds to be able to kind of pick us apart. And that's why I thought the three-quarter court press was what we needed. And then the, be, being able to regroup after you had a ton of turnovers, and to, but to regroup this time and be able to kind of right the ship, what did that mean to you and kind of this team as it moves forward? Yeah, growth. I've been telling you guys. I watched film. You know, when we had a little little time off, I watched film, and you could see how we're getting better. I think the, the regulars can see it too. You know, from three months ago, we, we're a different team today than we were from them. And for them to really break through – and make plays and get stops and make big shots and Lamar's contributions. Uh, you know, even though Jamari's not going to have 27 points, man, the way he impacts the game right now is just fantastic. And Miles Dredd really showed up. Uh, I even, I thought Mike Watkins' minutes were were critical. You know, a tip in, a fadeaway, and a couple monster rebounds was just fantastic. Everybody contributed, and, and that's why I think you're able to to push through and keep the lead. How do you feel like uh, Lamar has maybe evolved this season, and particularly uh, the defensive effort that he gave tonight? What did you feel like that did for the game? I think he's maturing, Nate. I, I think you can see that in him. You know, there's maturity, there's growth. Um, early on, he, he, he was down on himself too. But now I think he's broken through that, and he understands what a leader, what, what, what it means to lead. Leadership never takes a day off, and he, he gets that now. Because if his body language goes bad, back to Mark's question, it, then, you know, the freshmen are going to look at him like, whoa. But it didn't. And he, he was having great little huddles at the free throw line. Before I'd go in, they were having great huddles. Jamari's taking the board. I thought those guys really stepped up and took ownership of the team at the most critical points. Pat, uh, you just touched on Lamar's defensive contributions, specifically those, those blocks he had, you know, uh, late, late in the game there. What, what – what, what did you think that those did for you guys from a momentum <laughs> no, standpoint? They prevented points and swung the momentum back to us. I thought what he did was better in the half court. Like, he did some good things in the half court. You're going to see the monster blocks and all that stuff. I'm going to look at it the way he was doing what he was supposed to do. He's keeping guys in front of him, playing good team defense. We talk about toughness. We talk about talking. We talk about teamwork. And I think Lamar led us in that tonight. About three minutes ago, you had a hug with Jamari going into a timeout, and you guys talked for what seemed like a long time. What is that conversation like, especially because I thought he played pretty well tonight. What is what is that conversation that late in the game? Just he turned it over. I didn't want him to compound the problem. I didn't want him to dwell on it. I'm moving on. You got to move on. Keep making great plays. Keep being the little engine that could for us out here. Um, keep leading. Um, now we're winning, three-minute situation. Now we're in our three-minute offense. Just make good decisions and make sure we're smart on the other end because that's where we're going to win the game. And for those of us that have been around for a while, this I don't think that this game is necessarily a surprise. There's sort of this has happened with you guys before. Why do you think that you've been able to get everyone on the same page for a night like this and been able to win? 
you know, your fair share of them? You know, it comes down to the players and the staff. I think they've done a really good job of keeping everybody together. Lamar, John, Josh, Jamari, our leadership council. We've added Rajir to that. I think those guys have done a great job. We've, we've uh, created a juice squad. Those three guys have done a great job. It really starts with those guys because if they don't come in with the right approach, and they don't come in with a great attitude, you're not, you're not able to compete at Ohio State or Northwestern or against Purdue here and, and win a game like tonight. Pat, yeah, you played for a large majority of the first half in a smaller lineup. I think Mike and John com only combined for about 11 minutes in the first half. Um, Coach Beeline was just near talking about that um, and the matchup problems it created for them. Did you know going into the game that that was something you would be able to exploit, or was that just a product of Brasdakis being in foul trouble and being able to take advantage of Teske with on Lamar? You know, and I actually went to Lamar a couple of weeks ago and talked to him about playing the five and what he thought because he had to buy into it first. Because if he didn't want to do that, then, you know, we couldn't go to it. But he did, and he wanted to play in that small lineup. So with, with that type of leadership, all right, let's do it. And I felt like that was our mismatch. I, I felt like we could try to go at Teske and put them on their heels a little bit. And, and don't get me wrong, I think Teske and Simpson are one of the best duos as far as defense in the, in the Big Ten. I mean, Teske last year walled up on every play. You know, he's really good, and he moves really well for a big man. Simpson's equally as good, but I just felt like the small lineup would give us some speed and some mismatches. You, you mentioned Mike. Um, what did you feel like? It seemed like hustle plays. Yeah. Were, you know, kind of the... And I haven't seen that. And he gave us extra effort. Not just one effort, he gave us two. Not just two, he gave us three. He made some big-time plays for us, and he was engaged. And that, that is that we're that's that's a good day. That's a good day. Is there any way for you to bottle that for the rest of the season? We're gonna figure it out. You talked a lot about Lamar's defense. How have you seen him progress throughout his career on the defensive end? And now everyone knows he's top three in the Big Ten scoring. But now you take pride in the defensive effort. And how have you seen him become maybe one of the better two-way players now in the Big Ten, not just one of the better offensive players? I, I just think it's a one-two. I think Lamar has to, understands now he's got to play with hair on fire. and it, It's, it's got to be it's, – it's a one-two. I want to get stops. And not conserving energy. He knows he's going to play 38. He's a thoroughbred. He's in great shape. It's just really a, a one-two, and, and he's, he's doing a great job. He did a great job against Northwestern, Ohio State, and now tonight he's got to keep that going. Lamar said <clears throat> after we talked to you earlier this week that he could be 0 and 100 and he would still go out and compete that hard – those guys are hard to come by, especially in situations like this. You wouldn't, I don't think, blame anyone if they just didn't give that little extra. What does it mean to have, you know, essentially a roster of guys that still care this much, you know, regardless of what maybe has happened before? Yeah, like I've said before, you know, we're athletes. We're in the world of sports, and you can't look at your record. You, you can't look back. We got to keep looking forward. We got to keep getting better. And if you're in this world, you got to love competition. If you don't love to compete, then you shouldn't be playing sports. Go to the cream or you get a job. Serve ice cream. But right now, this, this is what it is. This is the Big Ten. It's without question the best league in the country. Every night, it's an absolute battle. And we love it. We love it. That's what it's going to be. Pat, Coach Beeline mentioned that you guys have bit, had second half leads in like the last six games, I think it is. And in this one, against the best team that you faced all season, most likely, you're able to stave off that comeback. What does that mean for the belief of the team moving forward? Yeah, I never thought they lost their belief. I always felt like um, maybe it was shook a little bit, rattled a little bit. But how, how they're showing up and, you know, their, their connectivity and the culture that we've created, I didn't really see the bad body language or facial expressions. I just saw guys eager to correct it. And when you have that, good things are bound to happen. We earned our luck tonight. The ball bounced our way. Shots went in. You look on Ken Palm, we're 348 out of 351 in luck. That's going to change because we're going to create our own luck. Pat, you mentioned Jamari. Ben, you like that. I know you did. You just looked up Ken Palm. Pat, you mentioned Jamari's effort on the defensive end. Last, last game against Ohio State, he had – a pretty uh, incredible chase down steal, and he had an, another one. Not he didn't dive on the ball. He didn't tonight, die, but, but he still yeah, he still, yeah, he still got, got the chase down steal. How have you seen his effort uh, maybe improve? Not not improve, but increase. And how has that played a role in the effort of the, of his teammates as well? Yeah, I, I think what he's done is really leadership to help Lamar lead, 
and then he's going out and playing as hard as he can. So other guys are going to look at him and say, well, if Lamar and Jamar are doing it, we have to do it. I mean, there's no excuse now for us not to play hard. And he's playing incredibly well. He's, uh, I thought he's, he's taking care of the basketball. He's making good decisions. He's not overdoing it. He's taking shots when, when he needs to. Um, but on the defensive end, man, he's really cre creating uh, havoc for opponents. What's your approach or what do you intend your approach to be moving forward or using this? Can I just enjoy this for a couple hours? Of, of course you can, but you always think ahead. So what, what, you know, what do you do in this situation uh, with a team like this? What do I do? Yeah. We show up, get back up tomorrow, say, hey, great job, but that's in the past. That's over. Let's continue the process of getting better. Let's keep creating our identity of defending and rebounding in Penn State basketball, let's keep getting better. So that's that's where we're going to head tomorrow on Thursday and Friday, headed into Purdue. Pat, I know you guys were off the floor at the time, but did, when did you hear about Coach Beeline's ejection, and does that affect you or the team in any way, and how do you prevent it from affecting the team? Yeah, I, I didn't know anything about it until a staff member told me, but I didn't dwell on it. I just moved on. You mentioned Jamari's wreaking havoc on the defensive end. He was guarding Jordan Poole for a, a, a large portion of tonight's game, and it, Jamar was pressuring him as soon as he crossed half court, and Poole ended up shooting, I think, one of eight from three. How much do you think that played into the game and taking away one of Michigan's better offensive players? Yeah, I, I thought, you know, we switched a little bit too, so I can't give Jamari all the credit. we got to give the guys that were on the floor a lot of credit for being there on the catch and really speeding him up and making him uncomfortable. He's one of the best – uh, scorers or shooters in this league, hands down. I want a lot. I want a lot of film on him, and what he's doing for that team is is pretty amazing. But uh, again, Jamari did a great job of speeding him up. But Lamar had him, Josh had him, Rajir had him. Everybody had a turn at trying to wear him down and take him out of rhythm.